could all just stand to our feet. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory, glory to the name of Jesus. Father, we worship you this morning. Father, we magnify you. God, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We humble ourselves before you. We come in no other name but in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeshua Amashia. We bow down and we crown you as king. We bow down and we say that you are Yahweh. We bow down and we say that you are the Holy One of Israel. And that there is none like you. We praise you, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We thank you this morning, the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. As we enter into your gates, so oh God, your word said we should enter into your gates with thanksgiving. And into your courts with praise. You say, God, that we should be thankful unto you and bless your name. For you are good. Your mercy is everlasting and your truth endure through all generation. So this morning, oh, Abba Father, we give you the praise that you deserve. Come on, just begin to worship him in this place. Just begin to worship him as this is a day that the Lord has made. Oh God, we will rejoice and we will be glad in it. Oh, we magnify you this morning. We worship you this morning. Oh God, we say take the stage and have your way. Oh God Almighty, I am just a vessel and nothing more. But when you are done, God, we ask you that you will take the glory. We are satisfied just to see you glorified. For you are high and you are lifted up. And the train of your glory, uh, it fills the temple. So this morning, uh, we take the low place uh, and we say, God, be lifted up in this temple. Uh, be lifted up in this place. Uh, we take the low place uh, and we ask you, God, to permeate our being. Uh, we take the low place uh, as we send up Judah. Uh, we ask you that the blessings will come down. Uh, we take the low place. We pray that hearts will be receptive. We take the low place. We ask you, God Almighty, everything and vain imagination and everything God that wants to exalt itself against the knowledge of God in the name of Jesus. We take the low place. We pray over the speaker. We pray over the atmosphere. We pray over the service. We pray over the dedication. We pray over every life in the name of Jesus. We ask you to permeate this place with your presence. We humble ourselves. We humble ourselves to you, God. I take the low place. Oh, you are here, 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 you are here. Oh, da da ba sha, te da da ba no sata. I take the low place. For you are here. You are here. Lord, so take the stage, Lord, and have your way. I'm just a bit and nothing more. And when you're done, please. Can we sing that one more time and say, take the stage, take the stage, and have your way. I'm just a vessel, and nothing more. And when you're done, please stay. Please, please take the glory. I'm satisfied. 
we can be satisfied to see you I'm going to ask Sister Sasha Gate to come. Amen. And she will be reading the morning scripture. Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. See you. And I want to see you. And I want to see you. If you could please remain standing. For the reading of God's word. Amen. Glory to the name of Jesus. Thank you, Abba. Good morning. The scripture reading comes to us from Isaiah 61, reading from verse 1 through 11. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord had anointed me to preach the good tidings unto the meek, he had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted and to proclaim the liberty of the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance to our God to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for the morning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that they may be glorified. And they shall build the whole ways, sorry, and they shall build the whole ways, they shall raise up the former desolation, and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolation of many generations. And strangers shall stand and feed your flock, and the son of the alien shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. Be he, but he shall be named the priest of the Lord. Men shall call you the minister of our Lord. Men, sorry, God, he, sorry, but, but, but he shall be named the priest of the Lord. 
men shall call you the minister of our God. Ye shall heed the riches of the Gentile, and in their glory shall he boast yourself. For your shame ye shall have no double and confusion. For confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore in their land they shall possess the double. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. For I the Lord love judgment. I hate robbery for a burnt offering. And I will direct, in, sorry, and I will direct their work in truth. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them. In their seed shall be no, and their seed shall be known among the Gentiles, and their offsprings among the people. All that see them shall acknowledge them that they are the seed which the Lord had blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for He had clothed me with garments of salvation; He had covered me with robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decketh. Decketh himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorned herself with her jewel. Eleven and last, for as the earth bringeth forth her buds, and as the garden causeth the things that are sown in to spring forth, so the Lord will cause the righteous and praise to spring forth before all the nation. The word of God is already blessed, and we honor it by saying, "Thanks be to God." Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Sister Sasha Gay. Amen. You may be seated for just a little bit. For as the earth bringeth forth her bud, and as the garden causeth the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all nations. Amen. The word of God is so powerful and so encouraging glory to god the word of god is prophetic and every time we read it amen there should be something that we get from it amen amen hallelujah we give honor to god today amen we got some special people here with us today amen glory to god we have today is a packed day for us we continue in our revival under the theme release break out to break free we had an amazing time in the lord friday night my good god from Woo! glory i feel jesus y'all don't get me started amen glory to god bishop antonia mitchell brought the house down the holy spirit was in our midst amen we have our covering bishop and they will be back with us tonight glory to god but i give honor to god this morning who is the head of my life amen i honor him amen i want to honor also pastor shireen come on put your hands together stand to your feet and honor this awesome amazing wonderful anointed Glory to God. Amen. Y'all will hear more from her um, later on. I got Pastor JJ, our associate pastor. Amen. Our missionary, Simit Pretty in the Blue. Our minister, Kareen Miller, Providence Campbell, Deacon, musicians to everyone today. Amen. Please accept greetings. Amen. We have some first time guests. Amen. It's a lot today, so we won't be going individually. But I'm going to ask the family. Well, I see a lot of my family here, y'all. <laughs> I see a lot of family. Listen, listen, listen. It has been so many years I have not seen Larky. Come give me a hug, cuz. Come on, 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 come Give me, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. It's okay, Ziggy. We, yours is coming. It's, it's, it's all right. But we bless God. Listen, this is Mama's nephew, and that's Mama's niece. So that's um, her great nephew. So you go now. Great nephew. Yes, I got, so I got. And great niece back there. So I'm gonna ask those who came with um, with Ziggy, Marsha Lee. Those who came with Marsha Lee, I'm just gonna ask you to stand so that we can give you a GCPRM. Woo! Come on, GCPRM, put your hands together. Amen. Glory. Hey. Listen, we bless God for you today. Thank you so much for coming. Amen. I pray that you will be back again. Praise the name of Jesus as we have the honor and the privilege. Amen. To dedicate this baby back to the Lord. There's another baby. I don't see him yet. 
but we will be dedicating this baby back to the Lord and we are humbled and honored amen that they are following the ordinance of God to give this baby back amen glory to God we got our consecrated oil and some prayer ready glory to God amen because we going to decree and declare some things hey amen but i ain't the one preaching i'm just excited in jesus amen i don't know if um if brad is here yet no are there any other first time guests that didn't accompany marshallese family mr and mrs alexander amen god bless you i i, I that, that's well this is my first time meeting him but god bless you amen amen god bless you thank you so much for coming amen thank you so much for coming god bless you woman of god thank you who invited you uh, that's your mama sister rose no 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 that's not sister rosemary sister rosemary is sister sasha's mom that's your mama god bless you mama we heard so many great things about you amen a prior warrior amen a woman who love god glory to the name of jesus so we bless god for you amen glory to the name of jesus we're going to switch gear just a little bit praise and worshipers we're gonna switch gear a little bit as we enter into the presence of god we're already there but we will be basking some more in his presence glory to the name of jesus we will be basking some more in the presence of god amen glory to god hallelujah come on just put your hands together and just begin to worship him come on put your hands together and just begin to tell him how much you love him how much you adore him glory to the name of jesus come on just put your hands together and just begin to tell him that god i thank you that you kept me i thank you oh that you preserved my life i thank you that you brought me here safely i thank you that you woke me up this morning glory to the name of jesus come on just begin to give God some praise just begin to give God some worship just begin to give God edible satire glory to the name of Jesus let's give him the highest praise and say hallelujah come on give him the highest praise and say hallelujah God
I know y'all want to take this one fast, but give me a moment. How great is our God? How great is His name? He's the greatest. You see, I have to take this one slow. Because 17 years ago, I was in somebody's hospital being prepped for surgery. All the odds were against me. Surges after surgeries. Been told you could have died, but how great is our God? How great is His name? He's the greatest one forever. The same. He rose at the water on the mighty red sea. He said, "I lead, I lead you." Only trust me. Come on.
gonna praise His name Each day just the same. It's just the same I'm gonna praise I'm gonna praise Him I'm gonna praise Him I'm gonna praise Him I'm gonna praise Him Look what the Lord has done Has done Hallelujah, glory to God Come on, put your hands together For the Holy Spirit of God That is in our midst We are grateful today For all that God has done for us We thank Him That He's kept us Many of you have been through things and according to the plan of the enemy, you should not be alive and you should not be in your right mind. Hallelujah. But just put your heart and your, your hand on your heart, on your chest and feel that heartbeat and say, so, Lord, I thank you. In spite of everything that you might be going through, we're getting ready for the preacher. God has been good to us God has been good to us I shouldn't have been here according to the agenda and the time clock of the enemy but I thank God that I don't go on man's time I go on Kairos time which is God's time hallelujah so we just praise God this morning come on musician just continue to play something as we get ready to receive the woman of God Amen. As we get ready to receive the woman of God. Hallelujah. Father to child, spirit to spirit, lighted by your word. And with your breath of life, that's so I come alive. That's how I change my world. Just breathe the name upon me. Just breathe the name upon me. Stand to your feet for just, just a little bit. I know the welcome was done before we had the others join in. Welcome, amen. My name is Pastor Olivia Ferdinand. I'm the senior pastor, amen, of this ministry. Amen. I just wanted to put your hands together as I welcome to this podium our anointed assistant pastor, who is my baby sister. I am humbled and honored by what God is doing in her life. I should hear the church shouting. She gets a little embarrassed when I say this, but let me tell you, she didn't get saved the traditional way, and I will always say it. She didn't get saved the traditional way by coming to the altar and raising hand. God met her in a dance hall. Right in the club. And from that day, she yielded her life to God in 2012. This is a byproduct of prior. And I am proud to be her big sister an anointed prophet of God who is preaching and troubling the enemy's camp. Put your hands together as we welcome no other person than Pastor Shireen Forever Young in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on and continue to give God glory. Come on, continue to give God glory. Come on, we have a packed house and I don't hear it. If God has been good to you, I need to hear hallelujah in the house. Do we have
have a hallelujah in the house? Do we have a hallelujah in the house? Come on, open your mouth and begin to worship. Come on, open your mouth and begin to give God glory. Come on, open your mouth. Come on, open your mouth and praise Him. Come on, give Him a wave offering. If God is good to you, if you want Him to breathe on you today, I need to... Hold on. One second. See, there's something that happens to me when I come in the presence of God. That I lose all senses of my own sense, if that makes sense, probably not. But it is all about God. And whether we are saved or we are unsaved, we all still know that there is a God. And we know that it is him that loaned us yet another day to be in the land of the living. Because we could have been six feet under. We could have been planning a funeral right now. We could have been burying a loved one right now. We could have been laid up in a hospital bed. But the goodness of God, the mercy of God granted us one more day to be in his presence and to be in his house. So I need the church of the living God to wake up and give God the glory that belongs to him. I need for the church. I need for the church to open their mouth uh, and begin to glorify the King of Kings. Uh, begin to glorify the Lord of Lords. Uh, begin to glorify Adonai. Uh, begin to glorify Jehovah Rapha. Uh, begin to glorify El Shaddai. Uh, begin to glorify our way maker. Uh, begin to glorify our promise keeper. Uh, begin to glorify our King of Kings uh, and our Lord of Lords. Uh, begin to glorify him gcprm y'all too quiet Hallelujah. don't make me take my shoes off before i start preaching i need to hear the church of the living god begin to glorify my king because my king deserved the best worship and if this is my last worship today it gotta make sense and it gotta count for something otherwise i would be in my bed still wrapped up under my covers but I came to give up what belongs to God. I came to give it to him. So I need for the church to come alive. With this say this was revival. With this say this was revival. Come on and say Holy Ghost. Come in our midst and revive me. Come on let me hear the church of the living God. Begin to shout and begin to scream. Begin to shout. Begin to scream because God he is worthy of the praise when I used to be in the dance hall I used to be the center of attention and the loudest one and the one gyrating the most and that was the old Shireen so this new Shireen now I gotta put even more effort into worshiping God because I should have been dead and gone a long time ago I should have lost my mind a long time ago I should have been laid up somewhere Pastor JJ maybe even walking the streets and eating out of garbage but the magnified grace of Almighty God kept me and kept you and that is the reason why I love him the way I love him that is the reason why I praise him the way that I praise him because he has been too good to me I know people might look at me and say I'm a fanatic but I'm okay with that labels because I used to get all them other labels that wasn't mine and didn't belong to me. But as long as I'm a fanatic for Jesus, that's okay with me. Come on, is there another fanatic in here for Jesus? Then let me hear the loudest shout in this house. Let me hear the loudest shout in this house. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of our King. Hallelujah. Greet Father, Son, and Holy Spirit who is the head of my life and it isn't within him that I live, move and breathe and have my being and without him I am nothing but because he lives inside of me I can boldly declare that I am something today because of the blood of Jesus Christ I greet my senior leader, amen our apostle, amen pastor O Amen to my associate pastor, amen my other mommy, amen amen pastor JJ to my mom 
<laughs> Mom, I think you're aging backwards. <laughs> you're aging. <laughs> you're aging backwards. Amen. Amen. And that is the amen, the womb that I came from. Amen. Amen. And my husband in the back. <laughs> my, it's all the way in the back. <laughs> Uh, Marshall has to say, that's my baby daddy, that's my husband. Amen, that's my little side piece, that's my boopsy. Anything I want, I find in him. Amen, that's my boyfriend when I need him to move. Come on, amen. Amen, amen, amen. I got to boast about mine. Amen, because I dated enough jerks. Amen, till I found the right one. Amen, well, he found me. Well, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. He might have another story. Amen. I am so happy today to be, amen, in the presence, amen, of my family. Amen. I'm talking about blood family. Amen. Amen. I am so happy to see each and every one of you. And I'm sure that we have some family sitting in here that we don't know who they are. And we're going to have, <laughs> Marshall, going to have to help us to decode um, this thing. Amen. Some of it is by blood and some now is by marriage. Amen. But I want to take a moment, amen, just to thank you for coming in. Amen. Today, amen, to dedicate the baby to bring him back to the Lord. Amen. I'm not going to be long. Amen. Before you, because we have a packed day tonight. We're coming back tonight. Amen. To close off. Amen. Our revival. Amen. The scripture was already read. Isaiah 61. Amen. From 1 to 11. In the interest of time, I'm not going to read. Amen. Again, I'm just going to go into what the Lord has laid on my heart. I'm a woman of a certain age. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We are women of a certain age, and you know when the Lucretias is on. Amen. It brings a different type of heat, plus Holy Ghost heat. Amen. Is a combination. Amen. That makes you sweat. But we bless God. Amen. Today, Amen. We're we are speaking on the our revival theme: release, break out, to break free. And I know that God is truly calling his people to be released and to break out and to break free. But what I've noticed, Pastor JJ, that breaking out and breaking free and being released, amen, for the believers, it is not as easy as it is for the world. So what I've come to understand that we must fight for it. We must believe in it, we must declare it, we must claim it, and then we must live it out. And if we hear the word of God from Isaiah 6 to 1, we hear one of the most powerful prophecies of the Messiah. And ultimately, he's the one that would release the oppressed, break every chain, and set captives free. So this is not just a message and a word for then. It is also a word for now because he's still the same God yesterday and forevermore. And it is a word that I believe it is an, it's an untimed word for the church because I believe as believers, we sometimes, it appears that we are the most held back set of people. We are the most bound set of people that even the world will look at us and think many times that we are a laughing stock. But today, I am here to declare that we are being released and that it is time for us to break out and to break free. And if we have to look at the word release, we know to release something means to, to let it go, to loosen your grip, and to hand over control. But hand over control to whom? God bless you, Apostle. Amen, Apostle Clinton. God, I lost my manners for a second. Amen, amen, amen. We have to hand over control. But too many times when we hand over control, we hand over control to the wrong set of people. And we hand over control to man 
But in this sense, the reason why we are still not released and we're still bound is because we still have the grip on everything that concerns us and we feel that we have the answers and that we can fix it. But I am here today to let somebody know that the only way that you can be released is if God himself would release you. I also want to say to the church, for there to be a release, there must be a shift. And if you look back, you can look back at the transfer of, uh, of, of wealth and the transfer of the bigger portion. Um, there has to be a release from the father to the sons and to the daughters. Um, and that's the only way they will know the portion of what they were going to be given. Um, but I serve a God who doesn't abide by the rules of men. And he doesn't have a protocol um, that he has to follow because he is God. Um, so when he declares and when he says that it is time for you pastor ought to be released he will shift the order of things that you will be the last in line for that release and then all of a sudden you will become the first in line for the release he will have the hand of the blesser to jump for the one who everyone thinks should be blessed and should be released to the one that he has called to be released into such a time as this I'm here to tell the church that objection have already been overruled in the realm of the spirit so we know that we are in position and we are in the right place at the right time to receive what we need from God to be released so that we can break out and we can break free I am here to tell you today that be careful uh, how you handle me. Uh, be careful how you handle uh, your brothers and sisters. Uh, be careful how you handle strangers uh, that are out and about. Uh, be careful how you handle the prostitutes. Uh, be careful how you handle the drunkards. Uh, be careful how you handle the ones that don't look like you, uh, who don't smell like you. Uh, be careful how you handle the ones who, who do not have an education. Uh, be careful about the how you handle the ones um, that have three and four baby daddies um, be careful how you handle people um, and the reason why I'm saying this is because you don't know that your release um, pastor all might be tied to that one um, who you decide to mishandle um, because God have a way of using um, things that don't make no sense to make sense um, so when you mishandle me now um, you might have to come right back in front of me um, and I might be the one in the position to make a decision to release you or to keep you bound so I am saying don't count me out because you see me in my situation and you feel that you have a false sense of being released and I seem bound what I can tell you is that I'm going through my process what I can tell you that I'm going through sanctification what I'm telling you is that God is working on the inside of me and he has me in the potter house um, what I can tell you is that I don't cuss like I used to cuss no more um, what I can tell you I don't curse people out um, like I used to curse them no more um, what I used to tell you I no longer wear the labels um, that men gave to me um, and call you every name but a child of God um, what I'm here to tell you you might not see the money in the bank um, but don't worry about it um, because I know who my father is um, and I know that I'm not a bastard child um, so if if he's rich, I'm rich. I might not see it in the banquet, but in due time and in due season, God will begin to release what truly belongs to me. Be careful how you handle God's people. Let me talk to the church for a minute. Be careful how you handle your pastors. Be careful how you handle the prophet. Because it might not be the pastor that you like the best. It might not be the prophet that you like the best. But they're still the ones that have been set over you. I learned that from reading the story about David and Saul. That even when Saul has lost the anointing of God and God was no longer with him. Um, David still understood uh, that God still had released Saul uh, into position as king. Uh, and because the Lord released him, uh, him David had no business uh, putting his hands on the man of God. So even when we fall from grace... Even when we fall so deep, 
Pastor O, that we can't see our way out. Still be very careful how you handle me. Be careful how you handle someone who was once rich and now is poor. And then you begin to laugh and say, look at you. I know that would have happened to you. Be careful because time has a way of releasing things, Pastor O. That if you're patient enough, you will live to see your enemy become your footstool. I'm talking about release. There are so many things that we need to be released from. We need to be released from generational curses and issues. If you look back in your bloodline, there are so many things that you can begin to identify that you are still chained to or chained with. And if I have to go back all the way to my father's father's father's, and go back to my grandmother's parents, parents, parents. You will begin to see an entire line of obstacles and issues. You will begin to see so many altars that are desecrated with, with blood that is on them. And I'm not talking about the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm talking about witchcraft. I'm talking about principalities and powers. Because from our bloodline it ain't clean. And I'm saying the reason why some of us is still stuck in the same position year after year is because there's some generational things that we need to be released from have you ever looked at your life and you're doing everything right you're walking right before God I'm not talking about perfection you're walking right before God you're paying your tithes and your offering you're going out and you're serving your community, the poor, the sick. You're coming to church, you're fellowshipping. You do everything, you fast, you pray, you pray, you fast. And still nothing moves. You work and you can't see a dime in your pocket, apostle. Not a red cent. And the wheel is like a hamster wheel. It turns and it goes nowhere. Have you ever begun to look back? in your generation and see and trace the money situation in your generation at some point Pastor O there was a crack in the foundation and it became faulty and we became bound with a generational curse of poverty and God is saying he didn't create us to be poor that's a lie from the pits of hell. They take one scripture, oh God, and said, if you're rich, it's hard for you to enter through the eye of a needle and the camp. Come on, that is nonsense. God's people are supposed to have things. We're not supposed to live from paycheck to paycheck. There must be wealth. And I'm talking about the type of wealth that passed from generation to generation. But we can't get out of this cycle of having nothing. Our children need to go to school the best school and they have the grades and they have the mind but because we don't have the money we can't send them you're hiding from the landlord because you can't pay your rent your mortgage is backed up your cars keep getting repossessed look back into the generation of your lineage look back and see because there's some things that you have to go into fasting and prayer because they become stronghold but I am here today to say it is time for us to be released from the hands of the enemy. It is time for us to be released from depression because too many see folks depressed in the church. But if you see them apostle and you say how are you? I'm good and highly favored. You're lying. Tell the truth and say I am not feeling my best. We like to cover up things too much in the church and put on it like a mask and wear it and perform. But if I ain't good, I ain't good. And if you ask me, I'll be like, I ain't good, but I'm still thankful to God. But I realize that the enemy wants to keep my mind bound. And the church needs to be free. We need to be free from the opinions of men. How many of you have carried a label all your life? How 
many of you have carried a label all of your life of what they said? Apostle, if I begin to tell you what they said about me in my community, your mouth would drop to the floor. But let me give you one that I remember off the top of my head. They said I was going to be nothing. I was going to come to nothing. I was going to have how many trailer load of kids for trailer load of men. But that was the word and that was a label because I was a little party girl. But they didn't look inside my future and they didn't know that my destiny was tied to something greater and to someone greater. And now the same people I now have to pray for because they call me asking me for prayer and God would answer the prayer and they would call again. Be careful what you speak over people's children. I'm talking about release and breaking free. It wasn't easy to break from the opinions of men because when you have been told a thing all your life, you begin to believe it. If somebody tell you you're ugly all the days of your life, you will begin to believe it. If they tell you your work is like your daddy, you will begin to believe it. If they tell you that you believe it because that's what you've always heard. But now you come into God and you come into Christ and you take on the mind of Christ. Now now the flesh begin to wrestle uh, with the spirit and you're trying to reconcile uh, who you are with God uh, and who you are to God uh, and whose you are. So the opinions now you've carried from childhood into now your adult stage and you can't shake it. At 20, you still feel worthless. At 30, you still feel worthless. At 40, you still feel worthless. At 50 and 60, you still don't know who you are. I've asked some older women, who are you? And they have no clue and cannot answer the question. But I'm here to tell the church that revival is here and it is time for us to be released and break out and break free from the opinions of men there was a cult in the Bible that the Lord spoke about and the cult was tied up and the owner wasn't doing nothing with the cult the cult was just there pastor oh and the Lord said to me he's looking for those cults because we've been tied up for so long we've been boxed in minister for so long that we don't know what to do anymore. Some of us, we're on the brink of giving up. Some of us have already given up. We're just going through the motions. Because if you ask about their day, they don't even remember getting up. And going to work because they're so programmed. Because of how bound we have become. And how bound we are. But I hear God say it is time for the church of the living God to break out and to break free. What he said to me, church, is that he's already opened up the prison bars. But we refuse to step out. The jail cell is open. He's saying you are free. He's saying, I have released you. But now is the time for you to break out and break free. We come into midnight prayer. We pray for the jail cells to be open. And they fly open. But you still won't move. God is saying it is time for the church of the living God to break out and break free move from out of that cell of depression move from out of the cell of sadness and melancholy he's saying it's time for revival to break out in the church of the living god you see there's times we want to be too cute with our deliverance. There's times we worry about the wrong things. 
We worried about our neighbors. We worried about people knowing what's going on with us and knowing their business. That even when you come to church and the atmosphere is ripe for deliverance, like now because they're seeing people that they have never seen before. So they're sitting down and not realizing that the water is troubled. And God is saying, I am breaking you out of every limitation. I'm breaking you out of every sickness I'm breaking you out of the lies that they told about you that almost ruined your reputation I'm breaking you out oh good God Almighty I wish I had a church today to preach this thing like I feel it God wants to break you out you see a butterfly starts different the man of God Friday touched on it it starts crawling first but that's not the end game so when you see me on my belly before God broken that every time they say why she loved the altar so much why she always praying why she always crying what did she do what sin did he commit don't worry about me being on my belly. Don't worry about me being on my belly. Because I know that my release is coming soon. I know that my breakout and my break free, it is coming soon. After I done crawling on my belly. I now go into a cocoon. I go into seclusion. You don't see no posts on TikTok. You don't see no posts on Facebook. You don't see no posts on Instagram. The only place you see me is at the altar. I'm in a cocoon with me and Jesus. You can't call me phone and gossip. Because I am not with that. You can't tell me nothing. I am in a time of separation. In a cocoon. With just me and God. Because I know I need to fly. I know I need to break out. And to break free. So Holy Ghost just have me. Just sitting down. And waiting. It's me and you Jesus. I have a meeting with you Jesus. And I'm not moving from this place. Until you bring me out. And set me free. I'm not moving. Until my brothers and sisters get saved. I'm not moving. Until my son come back to you. I am not moving. Until this comes is healed. I am not moving. Until I get my deliverance. I don't care about the noise. I don't care about what you say. I am staying right at the altar of sacrifice. I'm going to put myself holy, acceptable, which is my reasonable service. I am cocooned with God. It's me and him. I don't business about what you're saying because it's me and God. You see, I got to break out, but I don't need the hands of man to help me to break out. Because listen to this, if you try to force the butterfly out of the cocoon, you're going to tear off its wing and they will never fly. So when I'm in my cocoon, pray for me on the outside, but leave me there because I don't want no man taking credit for what God is about to do when he released me. No man can say they helped me. This time, this time, this time, this time, this time, this time, I will have, and nevertheless, this time, I will have, the king has one more move, this time, I will have, though the seas are raging, bid me to come. This time, when I'm weak, let the weak say that I am strong. This time, this time, I'm trading 
my ashes for the garment of praise this time this time it will be because the hands of God is upon me this time devil you don't have no rap sheet this time devil you can't laugh this time devil you ain't got nothing to say this time devil you can't keep me bound this time this time I'm gonna find and nevertheless nevertheless Lord your will be done not mine this time I'm gonna find my strength in the midst of the storm this time I said this time church this time I got my mind made up that I won't turn back this time is between me and my God I don't need your help I don't need your opinion I don't want to hear from you this time I gotta hear from my God this time I will move when he speaks this time I will sleep in the arms of my daddy because my release and my breakout and my break free my release my breakout and my break free is dependent on my obedience to God because obedience is better than sacrifice he don't need no other sacrifice he needs the church of the living God to be obedient to him so that he can break you out and break you free this time when I come out I am going to soar this time this time this time you thought I was down for the count you thought I tapped out you thought it was over you thought God was finished with me but this time this time this time I'm gonna break out and break free this time sometimes God would have you in a position that will close you off to the world because we like to brag too much when we do stuff for people so sometimes God removed you from the hands that will help you and then talk about you Krishna he puts you in a position and he rips a carpet from under you that it becomes about just you and him so when he delivers you Mr. Mike and Miss Sally can't say what they did for you and that's why the butterfly gotta come out by itself and it's a painful process because they gotta break the cocoon open and the cocoon is designed to provide security we don't understand that when God speak and isolate you and put you one side and separate you you're too quick to want to come out and then your wings rip off and you wonder why you can't fly and you wonder why you're still on your belly crawling the crawling on the belly is for the serpent the only time I get on my belly is when I am prostrate before almighty God in prayer but that's what God wants to do he's saying it's time for the church of the living God to break out and to break free the doors is wide open so why aren't you stepping out he said tell them this time this time I hear it as clear as day he said tell them this time I 
And for somebody in this room, this time is the last time. This time may be the last time. People don't like this kind of message. But this time could be a last time. The 14th was dad's birthday. He died at what, 44 years old. He didn't know that that time was his last time. Because he was saying P, that's what he called mom. When I come home, he was in Cuba. When I come home, I'm going to give my life to the Lord. I'm going to start going to church with you. But he didn't. The next time he was in a church, he was in a coffin. This time. This time might be your last time. Who am I talking to? That the voice of God has been speaking to you. And I've been calling you and I've been drawn to you. And you have been saying, "Me soon come Jesus. Even for the Christians. That now live holy. And not living righteous. And is straddling the fence. This time may also be your last time. Stop the gossiping. Stop the backbiting. This time, the fault finding spirit. This time, because if you say release me, we gotta release for true, for true. In our real life, we gotta release. Some of us is filled with hate and anger and unforgiveness. And until you release it and let it go. The prison bars will be open and you will still be sitting in there not realizing it's open. Blind to your deliverance. When God saying, Guano, it's like Stockholm Syndrome. You kidnapped me for so long and now you let me loose and I want to go back to my captor. It's a serious place for the church to be in when we don't know when we are free. And God is saying, this time there got to be a difference. If you're saying you want me to release you, I will release you. But it don't matter how many revivals we keep in this house. If you don't walk the walk and talk the talk, we might as well close the doors and stay at home. It's time for the church to stop playing church. It's either you want God or you don't want him. But he's not a toy to be played with. He's not a book you put on the shelf. And when trouble hits your home, you pull it down and say, Lord, help me. This time, said God. It's time for the church to break out and to break free. If you feel that this time is your time, come. We have two babies to dedicate. If you want salvation, come. If you feel that the Lord has been speaking to you and calling you to surrender your life to him. Let this day be your day. So if the Lord should make his appearance now, everybody in here is saved. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. This time, this time, it is our time to, to be released and to break out and break free. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Spirit of the living God.
are if you don't know the Lord I'm just going to ask you to raise your hand and repeat this prayer after me even for those that's watching via Zoom and Facebook and YouTube it only takes believing in your heart and confessing with your mouth and say Father in the name of Jesus I confess that I am a sinner I believe that you died on the cross I believe that you rose again come into my heart be the Lord of my life I make you my Lord and Savior in Jesus name amen and amen I did hear persons saying that prior don't be afraid to confess and openly declare that I am a believer amen I am not ashamed of this gospel of Jesus Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation we're moving amen as we have our babies to, to dedicate at this time I am going to ask that we come today we're going to be giving back a portion that God has blessed us with amen our uh, tithe and our offering amen and right after that we will be going into dedicating the babies I just want to thank God amen for Apostle Campbell that surprised us today I mean he's no stranger to us amen he didn't tell me he was coming today but we bless God for him today amen and for everyone that's here in our midst to celebrate amen Jesus we have the information on the screen the cash up or the Zelle amen we take cash too okay we, we do. <laughs> amen glory to God but we bless God today um, the ushers they will be directing your praise and worship I'm gonna ask that you um, do a song amen as I get myself ready before you start the song I'm just gonna go ahead and bless the offering amen and the tithe amen that will be given to this house to further the work of the Lord amen God bless you in Jesus name what a word today this time what a word today Apostle, Apostle Clinton said why you never tell me say I saw she bad listen I had to I had to I had to fight with her and I had to put the past the foot down because when I talked to her as my sister she'll be like no but then when I talked to her I said no I'm not talking to you as my sister I'm talking to you as your senior leader and you're going to bring this word today as the Lord give you utterance. And I bless God for what God has done. Amen. And is doing through her life. So, Father, we thank you for the tithe and for the offering. And we release a blessing, God, that there will be a press down and a shaken together and a running over. Let every cheerful giver, God, bless them as they give according to the measure in which you have blessed them. We give you praise and we give you glory. Praise and worshipers, go ahead in Jesus' name. I am determined to hold on to the hand. Jesus is with me, on him I can depend. For I know I have salvation, I feel in my soul. Oh 
Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. We are about to move into the other part of the service to dedicate, amen, these two beautiful babies, Shamir and Kai. Amen. One is my great nephew. Yes. Amen. One is my great nephew and one is my cousin. So I'm going to ask the parents of Shamir and Kai to come and also the godparents and also the grandparents if they are here. Come Lucky, come stand with your sister. Come Krishna. Come, come. Don't make me put on the pastor hat, you know. <laughs> and I'm going to ask um, mom if you could stand the proxy for Auntie Leonie. Amen. Mom is going to be granny today. Amen. That's Auntie Pam. And come on. So I want Daddy to stand beside Mommy. Where are the where are the godparents so that I can know? The godparents? Okay, so the godparents, okay. So I'm gonna ask mom and dad to come and stand closer up here. And then the godparents, I'm gonna ask you to stand behind them. They could come. Not yet. And then come. Come, um, Brad. Where are the godparents for? Grandparent, um, Brother Wood? Your, your grandpa, come. Your, your, your first grandchild. Hey. Amen. And we're going to have minister who's going to take the pictures. And we have. Amen. Amen. Aren't they beautiful? It's a cousin meet cousin. I know. Oh, my goodness. I am. Oh my goodness, I am so nervous and happy at the same time. Oh my goodness. Y'all just so beautiful. Amen. Glory to God. Look at God. Okay, let me try to hold back this, the, these tears. Because y'all know. Y'all know I'm a crier. I can't cry yet. But this is, this is, this is a special event. Or at least you have to. And it's a very special moment for many reasons. I'm not crying because I'm sad. I don't take this lightly. To dedicate these wonderful babies back to the Lord. And also that the parents understand the importance of doing this. And a baby's dedication is a special 
right observed in a worship service, parents pledge to raise a child in the Christian faith. Because raising a child in the faith is not done independently. I recommend involving the parents and godparents and congregation and the charge to help each party recognize their responsibility in nurturing in faith. And baby dedication, it is biblical, it is scriptural, whatever it is we're doing, it is biblical. St. Matthew 19, 13 to 15 says, The little children were brought to Jesus for him to place his hands on them and pray for them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. Jesus said, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. When he had placed his hands on them, he went on from there. Amen. We saw when Hannah, he dedicated Samuel back to the Lord. Amen. I, I feel so old having great nephews. Amen. They just, they're just popping up all over the place. Glory to God. Amen. But we bless God for this opportunity. Um, the family is a divine institution ordained by God from the beginning of time. And children are a heritage of the Lord, committed by him to their parents for care and provision for protection and spiritual training. It is good when parents recognize all of these obliga obligations and responsibilities and make every effort to carry them out fully. So in this act of dedication, amen, the parents, Craig, Monty, Montague, Montague, okay, Montague, and every time I make a mistake, you correct me, okay? <laughs> Craig, Montague, Alexander, and Marshally, Althea, Alexander, Alethea, Alexander, that's the reason I should have had my glasses on. And they are the parents of Kai Ethan Alexander. Somebody clap for me. I got that right. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. And the parents of Shamir Aiden Wood is Devonte Rashid Wood and Shakaya Nadaja. Nadeja, almost got it right. Y'all can still clap me though. Morgan, amen. Glory to God. They are here to present these two beautiful gifts to the Lord. They have acknowledged that this is their responsibility to dedicate them back to the Lord. At God's chosen prophetic restoration ministry, we dedicate children rather than baptize them. Just as Hannah dedicated Samuel to the Lord and Joseph and Mary dedicated the infant Jesus to the Lord according to the Jewish customs. We believe dedication more closely follows the biblical patterns than baptism of which we have no precedent of an infant child being baptized in the Bible. So we don't baptize children. We dedicate them back to the Lord. A dedication does not bring about the salvation of the child nor is a dedication a picture of the salvation of the child it is not baptism instead it is a set solemn promises by the parents in the presence of god and the church and an expression of faith and hope in god's future grace it is the father's responsibility so it is craig's responsibility devonte's responsibility Marsha's responsibility and Shakaya's responsibility. Amen. As they dedicate Kai Ethan Alexander and Shamir Aiden Wood. Amen. They understand that they are gifts from God. And they have a spiritual responsibility to train them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. God calls every parent to the task of training up their children. Train up a child in the way that he should grow, that when he is old, he will not. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And as we make this commitment, as you make this commitment today, there are a few charges. Pastor Shane, I'm going to ask you to get a mic so that you can help me. There are a few charges that we will be charging the parents before God. It is a very sacred thing and a serious thing. Amen. So, 
Craig Montague. Uh -huh. Thank you, Jesus. Craig Montague, Alexander, and Devonte Rashid Wood. You have brought Kai, Ethan Alexander, and Shamir Aiden Wood before us today to publicly dedicate them to the Lord. And I have a series of questions to ask you. Shakeya, Nadeja, Morgan, and Marshally, Alethea, Alexander. I'm going to read this question. And after I've asked it, I am going to ask you to say, I will. Will you accept your God-given responsibility to raise your child's name in a Christ-centered home? I will. Will you teach and discipline them in your home so that you are not slowly dependent on the church or school system to impart biblical knowledge and spiritual values to Kai and to Shamir? Amen. Will you not assume that your careers or peers' approval are the highest goal in life, but rather what will advance the cause of Christ in Shamir's life and in Kai's life? If so, say, I will. Will you not make your life's choices based on secular trend or material gain, but rather you will make your life's choice based on what will benefit and strengthen the faith of your family? If so, say, and this charge is to the fathers. Amen. I'm Craig Montague Alexander and Devante Rashi Wood. Um, where am I reading, Pastor? Okay. As uh, Kais and Shamir, earthly father, will you give them the time and attention and affection that show the true nature of, of their father in heaven? I'm going to say it again. I'm, let me read it again. I, I need to make sure that I, I didn't quite hear it. Amen. And I got to make sure I know who to come look for. <laughs> Amen. Because this is a charge. So if you don't do it, I'm going to come look for you. And I will find you in the realm of the spirit first. Amen. So Craig Montague Alexander and Devante Rashid Wood. As Kai and Shamir's earthly father, will you give them the time, attention, and affection that show the true nature of their father in heaven? Meaning you give up time with the boys and the fellas to play soccer and whatever sports and family date night and son and father time and all the good things. That's what that means. You have to give up to sacrifice for them. And now this is for the mothers, um, Marshally and Jakaya. See, me know better than her, same mother, same father. Amen. As their earthly mother of Kai and Shamir, will you give them the special attention that they crave from you and the special nurturing touch that you are uniquely gifted by God to give to them? There's a special Ooh. thing that mothers give to My their God. children. No disrespect fathers that can't come from you. And there's a role that fathers play. No disrespect to the mothers. And if you got daddies in their life, we are, we're already winning. Amen. We're already winning. Amen. Amen. So will you give that to them? Amen. And these charges will be for the, the grandparents. Amen. Grandparents, who's hold gran up your hand. Who's grandparent? Grandparent. Grandpa that's okay. You? Mom, that's, oh. Grandparents meaning God, God um, grandfather and grandmother. Amen. Grandmother. Amen. Grandmother, amen. 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 So... Grandparents, you have already raised your children, mm -hmm. but there's a responsibility to impart godly wisdom. Do you promise to nurture Kai and Shamir in the ordinances of God? If so, say, I will. Amen. Amen. I love that, Grandma. Amen. Is this your first grandbaby? Uh -huh. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. And this is for the godparents. So, who, where are the godparents? Okay. So, Amen. I know we got the godparents. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, the godparent, Amen, which is we call the godmother and the, the godfather. Amen. 
they have a responsibility to Craig and to Marshallee and to Devonte and to Chakea. Your request is to be the godparents or the parents requested that you be the godparents for a reason. They've seen you in a light that will be an example to their sons. There is a special blessing when a woman, an extra special blessing, all children, their gifts from God. Amen. But to have a firstborn being a boy, mm -hmm. you are responsible also for two boys. In this last day, that is so much harder to raise children. So the fact that you've taken on this responsibility, I have a series of questions for you. In accepting this role, will you regularly pray for Devonte, Shakea, Craig, and Marshallee? As close relatives to this family, will you conduct your lives in a way that reinforce the biblical values that Shamir and Kai will need? In the future, that Devonte or Craig, listen carefully. Mm -hmm. Don't say I will if you're not going to do don't it. Don't say I will because, mm -hmm. see, I haven't said I will yet. In the future, if Devonte or Craig or Marshallee or Shakaya, amen, if they are, it is not in their power to take care of these two children. Are you standing in front of a congregation? You could turn around and, and God. look. And more so, mm -hmm. God. You could look. Uh, witnesses. Mm -hmm. That you will take care of these children. Because you see, we have a culture that a lot of persons believe that a godparent only buy gifts. That's, That's a right. part of it. That's a bonus. Mm -hmm. That's not the most important part. It's spending time. So it's a great responsibility of a godmother and a godfather that if you teach them, we won't depend on the school system to do it That's right. or the world to do That's it. Right. After God, it's Marshallee, it's Craig, it's Devonte, and it's Shakaya, then the godparents. Well, Pastor, may I correct the order? It's um, God. It's then God. Then the. Oh, you said Marsha. But we're going in the order. Yeah, but you know what I mean. Okay. The parents. <laughs> so it's God and then the parents. Yes, amen. Amen. And then the godparents, the grandparents, mm -hmm. they are there to just spoil them. And that's what they do. You that's right. They're going to give them spoil candy them and whenever. Send them home to you. Whenever they want to. So I'm going to ask the congregation if you could stand with us, please. We're getting there. Don't worry. Stand with us. I'm going to ask everyone, amen, that is physically able to stand, to please stand. Amen. Everyone that's physically able to stand, to please stand. Congregation, will you as a community of faith support Devonte Rashid Wood, Shakaya Nadeja Morgan, Craig Montague Alexander, Marshallee Alethea Alexander, by the Christian love and example you set by your lives. If so, please say we will. Amen. At this time, we will be taking the babies and we will be dedicating them back to the Lord. Amen.
Don't pull the wig off. I know. <laughs> you know <laughs> wig snatcher. I, 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 he's a wig snatcher, y'all. Lord Jesus. It's a good thing I anchored it in the Lord this morning before I left the house. <laughs> we're going to be in the Lord. As I cover I'm praying for you. You better come and trust me like your hands, okay? Like your cousin. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So we anoint your eyes, that you will see what only God will have for you as a discerner and as a prophet. We anoint your ears in the name of Jesus Christ, that God will block out the outside noise from this world. We anoint your lips that you will speak the word of God. And that everything that flows from your lips in the name of Jesus Christ will be words of blessing and comfort. We anoint your hands that it will be used as a pen of a ready writer. We anoint your feet in the name of Jesus. That everywhere that you go and you tread upon, uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, that even that ground in the name of Jesus will be blessed. God, we present Shamir uh, and we present Kai before you. Yes. I pray over them uh, in the name of Jesus as we hold them in our hands. Uh, oh God, we ask you to hold them in yours. Uh, we ask you to joy over them with singing. Um, uh, I pray, God, as they are dedicated back to you, and in the name of Jesus, that no weapon that is formed against them, it will not be able to prosper. We decree and declare over their lives that Kai, oh God, and Shamir, that they are great. We decree and declare over their lives that everywhere they tread their feet, oh God, that they are blessed. We decree and we declare over their lives that in the name of Jesus, whatever God they want to pursue, that there will be a blessing over them in their going out and in their coming I pray over the parents. I pray over them, God. I pray, God, that you will lead them and direct them. I pray, God Almighty, that even in time to come, when decision needs to be made, where these children are concerned, that, God, you will direct them. So, God, as you've instructed us, to bring them back to you. Right now God. We place them before you. And we place them at the foot of the cross. And we dedicate. Oh God almighty Shamir. Aiden Wood. In the name of the father. In the name of the son. In the name of the blessed Holy Ghost. Yes. The shout of the king. Is, is upon you. you. God we dedicate Kai. Ethan Alexander. Yes. In the name of the father. In the name of the son. In the name of the blessed Holy Ghost. Hold him up Pastor Serene. I know for a few seconds. I would say. The shout of the king is upon you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm going to be handing the babies back to their earthly father. Their earthly father. Amen. Hallelujah. As you hold your son, Devante. As you hold your son, Craig. I mean, no. As you hold your son, no, Craig. No. As you hold your son. That one. That one. As you hold your son, 
as you hold your son in your hand. And I know for a fact that both of you are great fans. God parents, Wayne.
I want to thank everyone. You may be seated. We are going to close. I'm not going to pronounce any benediction as we will be coming back. Uh, we're not going to pronounce any benedictions what we, because we will be back here, amen, to close out our revival. But we had to take this request to dedicate these two beautiful babies back to the Lord. Amen. Can you just stand with me one last time and then we're going to close. Amen. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We love you. We honor you. We glorify you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for the word in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the lives, oh God. We thank you for these two babies that was dedicated back to you. Oh God Almighty, Kai and Shamir. I pray, God, that you will continue to bless them and bless the parents and the godparents and the grandparents in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh God, as we're about to go, but not from your presence, I pray, God, that you will be with us in Jesus' name. Thank you so much, YouTube. Thank you, Facebook. Thank you, Zoom. Thank you to all our first-time guests for being here with us today. Please come again. Amen. Not just for the christening come again